Hi, my name is Holly Hagel, and I'm the Director of Education and Training for the Institute for Research, Education, and Training in Addictions. And I've been working here with the faculty at the School of Nursing for the past six years on integrating behavioral health interventions into nursing care. Today we're here to talk about practicing interprofessional collaborative practice. And you've already gone through the online modules about ESPERT, and now you might be wondering, what's the connection between ESPERT and IPCP? Well, that connection is engaging in relationships for patient-centered care. The IOM, or Institute of Medicine, set a set of recommendations with the goal of increasing interprofessional learning through preparing health professionals to deliberately work together with the common goal of building a safer and better patient-centered and community population-oriented U.S. healthcare system. They've determined four interprofessional collaborative practice domains, and these domains are values and ethics for interprofessional practice, roles and responsibilities, interprofessional communication, and teams and teamwork. We're going to look at each of these competency domains and look at specific competencies under them, and then look at examples from the interprofessionals that you've been following through on the last modules. So let's start with the professionals. One of the nurses is thinking, what is this IPCP stuff? And one of our behavioral health specialists is saying, I'm already a little busy. This sounds complicated. So our professionals are skeptical, and you might be too. Let's learn a little bit more about what this means for your work. So the interprofessional collaborative practice model, as you can see on this slide, is composed of those four domains, and they meet together to increase the patient and family-centered and community and population population-oriented care. But the goal of IPCP is not to increase the complexity of the healthcare delivery system. <clears throat> so let's look at the first domain, values and ethics. These are values and ethics which are patient-centered and grounded in a sense of shared purpose with the, su with the support of the common goal of good health care and respecting the dignity, privacy, and confidentiality of our patients. So for the values and ethics competencies, these are shared values and mutual respect across professions that are primary to the patient, respecting the dignity of the patient, and embracing cultural diversity and individual differences as part of patient care. So what's the take home message for values and ethics? Well, this nurse thinks that if we reflect on and clarify our own personal values, then we can improve the care of our patients across the healthcare team. Let's look at competency domain two, roles and responsibilities. This is learning to be interprofessional, requ which requires an understanding of how other professional roles and their responsibilities come together for patient care. For example, using an evidence-based practice like ESPERT, each person in the healthcare team could have a particular role in delivering that practice. So the knowledge of one's own role and that of other professionals addresses the needs of patients and populations that you serve. You should communicate those roles with the patient, their families, and other professionals. And you should engage a diverse array of healthcare professionals because they complement professional knowledge and expertise. And also recognize your own limitations in skills, knowledge, and abilities, and bring in professionals to enhance those areas. So our nurse and our behavioral health specialists both think that different professionals contribute complementary knowledge, skills, and resources to a healthcare problem or a patient need. Let's look at the third domain, interprofessional communication. So that's communicating competencies, helping professionals to prepare collaborative practice through communicating a readiness and willingness to work together and presenting information with other members, patients, families, in manners that they can understand and that are safe and effective. So. We can choose effective communication tools and techniques. We can listen actively and encourage ideas and opinions from other team members, as well as our patients and their families. And we can consistently emphasize the importance of teamwork in patient-centered and community-focused care. So what's the take-home message for interprofessional, interprofessional communication? Well, our patient and nurse think that active listening is a core competency for interprofessional communication. So let's look at the final domain, teams and teamwork. 
learning to be a good team player is also learning behaviors that apply in any setting, healthcare setting, inpatient or outpatient, with shared goals for improving patients' care or the care of the community. It's also learning to work in a team enables uh, you to be a small part of a larger complex system, but the shared purpose of improving patient care. So performing these competencies with engaging health professionals in shared uh, center, shared centered problem solving, sharing accountability with other professionals for patient care, and using all the available evidence to inform effective teamwork and team-based practices. So what's the take-home message for interprofessional communication? Well, this therapist and her patient have found out that she, the patient has a better experience with the healthcare system and can make changes when patient care is delivered in safe, timely, efficient, effective, and equitable manner, manners. So just to summarize, we can improve patient care and outcomes through respecting, respecting the dignity, privacy, and confidentiality of our patients, fostering a patient-centered and community-oriented healthcare system by working on our active listening and communication skills, and preparing yourself for collaborative practice by working in teams. So you were asked to reflect on these questions earlier in the module, and you should be continually thinking about who is the healthcare team? How does the team go about their work? Does, what does the, achieve, the team achieve? What are the patient outcomes? And what is the level of patient satisfaction with the team practice? Well, thank you for participating, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the session.